A send-off is underway in Wellfleet. It's go time for this one, a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle named Turmeric. This is a critically endangered species. There's only about 8,000 females left. Turmeric is finally ready to head home, wherever home may be. Turmeric and other sea turtles have spent the last several months at the New England Aquarium Sea Turtle Hospital in Quincy. Jay Dore is a turtle biologist. Most sea turtles are directly impacted by the rising uh, temperatures of the seawater as well as the loss of habitat due to natural disasters that are becoming stronger as a result of global climate change. In fact, a 2015 study published in the journal Science shows that the Gulf of Maine is warming faster than 99% of the world's oceans. Warmth attracts sea turtles to Cape Cod Bay. When temperatures suddenly dip, they can become hypothermic and get stranded. Unfortunately, because of the shape of Cape Cod being the arm, uh, the turtles, when it gets cold, they want to head south, but they hit Cape Cod. The cold water comes in, the turtles start to float at the surface of the water, and then the winds are what actually will blow those turtles in. Adam Kennedy is director of the hospital. After opening in 2010, staff and volunteers rescued an average of 60 to 80 sea turtles a year. We're now seeing hundreds of turtles. The average is about 430 some odd animals per year now. Most of these turtles are endangered, including loggerheads, green sea turtles, and Kemp's Ridleys. Rehab can take months. These patients are often near death upon arrival with low heart rates and body temperatures in the 50s. We swim them in fresh water. Turtles that aren't doing well will get blood work. They all get a prophylactic antibiotic. They all get radiographed to see how they're doing. Every day they increase their body temperature until we get to the mid 70s. When they're ready for release, larger turtles are tagged for tracking. We really want to see what these turtles do after they've been rehabbed. What routes are they taking? Where are they foraging? Because there are so many turtles, some are transported to other facilities in the U.S. The goal, to get these animals healthy and back in the ocean as soon as it's warm again. It's awesome, you, know, you can never count a turtle out. These telegenic turtles also need a helping hand, the diamondback terrapin a state-listed threatened species. A terrapin is a salt marsh turtle, the only salt marsh turtle in the coastal U.S., and they are found from Corpus Christi, Texas, to Wellfleet, Massachusetts. Bob Prescott is Director Emeritus at the Mass Audubon Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary. Rescuing terrapins has been his passion project since the early 2000s. 30 years ago, if I told people there were terrapins in Wellfleet, they say would say no. But if we go further back in time to the 1930s, 1920s, they would be harvesting terrapins in Wellfleet, um, Orleans, and uh, Barnstable. They were harvested to make a delicacy, liquor-infused soup. Today, terrapins are falling victim to sea level rise and erratic temperatures, which can ravage eggs, skewing their gender ratios, even killing them. Our summers here on Cape Cod are getting drier and drier. You need that moisture to keep the eggs full and not have them start desiccating. Mass Audubon staff and volunteers labor all summer and fall to safeguard those eggs here on Lieutenant Island in South Wellfleet. The turtles live on the edge of the marsh and on the edge of the upland, and then uh, they use the upland areas to nest. And that's where you need to focus your energy and protect them. So this nest, 347, is 82 days in, of incubation right now. The crew protects terrapin nests from predators with wire cages, monitoring them once or twice a day. Heather Pilchard is a longtime volunteer. It's hands-on work, and it's just endlessly fascinating. Sometimes eggs end up in the wet lab with turtle research coordinator Jessica Chacha. So these are eggs that are possibly viable, that have not hatched yet. The wet lab is also a nursery for baby terrapins. We want to give them the best chance that they can get by making them stronger in the wet lab to then release. So we have released over 33,000 turtles since the start of this program. We're dealing with a species that is critically impacted by climate change. There's an overwhelming data set that is telling us that the planet is warming and we need to do something. This is a face of one of those creatures that you know is being impacted. 
It, it's really amazing to me that erratic weather mm -hmm. can skew gender ratios for turtles and other creatures. Yeah, Bob Prescott of the Mass Audubon says that Terrapin's gender is actually determined by the temperature. Oh. Um, but the colder it is, the more males will hatch and vice versa. Wow, imagine if we could do that. Let oh. me turn up the AC. I want a boy. <laughs> Doesn't work like that for us. All right. I'm